Louisiana Beer Reviews. Today we're looking at St. Arnold Sailing Santa 2013 version. Uh, this is a 22 ounce bottle. This beer has been out for a while and they blend their Christmas ale with their Elissa IPA. But they said they started adding spices to it. I kind of wish they had not done that. But they said they wanted to uh, change it up every year. So it's different. Different recipe, different beer, so I have to review it. Don't really have to. <laughs> but I have to in the context of wanting to review all the different St. Arnold beers. 7.2% alcohol, 42 international bitterness units. They use pale, two row, maris, otter, and caramel barley malt. Cascade is the main hop, but they use other hops. Uh, it's unpasteurized. It's a good score on Beer Advocate, but they're not differentiating between the different versions. They're just saying St. Arnold Sailing Santa, but it's there there is a difference, okay? Um, there's no score on rate beer because there's only eight ratings for this particular beer. So see rate beer is good about that. They'll differentiate. But if there was a rating, and I did the math, it would be a 78. So mine will be the ninth written review. I'm going to, like always, do the written review after this. I remember, I, well, I used to do written reviews. I always have since about 2009. And then I, one day I was sitting there and 2010 and I said pretty good smoke here it's about 45 degrees right now mostly cloudy and sort of damp and I remember I was thinking up uh, I wonder if anybody ever thought of doing a video review <laughs> one summer the summer of 2010 and I looked and sure enough quite a few people had going back to 2006 especially since 08 so and then I decided later in the year to do my own video reviews I thought it would be fun. Okay, uh, this is a very orange beer, or maybe an orange gold, gold a golden orange. Okay, let's put it to you like that. Medium, kind of soapy head. Um, off white head. It's a little hazy, but I don't. They didn't say anything about unfiltered, they say unpasteurized. I see a few little stray bubbles um, streaming up. <clears throat> it's about 8.25 in the morning. Let's go with the aroma. It smells spicy, they don't say what the spices are. Uh. I'm getting some um, Uh, some kind of breadiness like a spiced Christmas bread maybe cream come on son come out <laughs> uh, I can't place it it's undifferentiated spices but <sighs> nothing bad some kind of butteriness or something I don't know it it's hard to describe. It really is. Let's go with the flavor. This was five forty nine for the bottle, and it was the last one left. <laughs> oh man, this tastes like graham crackers. Okay, think of graham crackers. Definitely. The cinnamon and the the, the the brown bread cracker thing going on. Hey, if you want to drink a beer that tastes like a graham cracker, this is one for you. I'm more of a drinking a beer that tastes like a beer person, but I understand that the big thing today is the flavored beers so that people don't have to drink beer that tastes like beer and all of that. Um, but, um... Well, I like graham crackers. 
I like beets. Wouldn't necessarily want to drink a beer that tastes like beets. I like vinegar and like an Italian salad dressing. I wouldn't necessarily want to drink a beer that tastes like vinegar or Italian salad dressing or balsamic vinaigrette dressing, but uh, somebody probably will come out with that pretty soon. I like onions and bell peppers. Wouldn't want to drink an onion and bell pepper beer, but hell, why not? Let's, if we're going to destroy the whole concept, let's go all out and do it. Mm. The mouth feels light and watery. It's, this is like the lightest ale I've ever drank in my, in my life. And the finish is semi-dry. It's uh, very easy drinking and it's refreshing and it's uh, not really that good. Um, I just don't see the point to this. Uh, why'd they have to ruin it? <laughs> Decent lacing. Well, for a spiced ale, it's probably a B plus because of that wateriness. Just not a whole lot of body with it. No alcohol showing up. Um, for beer overall, how does this compare with beer around the world? Um, I bought some uh, Foster's, an oil can, 24, what is that, 25.3 ounce, something like that, uh, yeah, 25.4 ounce can. Yesterday, that's an ale, of course it has caramel color, this may also have it. That's the dirty little secret of craft beer. A lot of them have caramel color added. And then, but since it's craft beer, it's apparently okay. If, 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 if Newcastle Brown Ale adds caramel color, it's a big problem. But uh, I think the Foster's Ale for $1.50, it was on sale at Mathurin's, $1.50 a can is way better than this for $5.49, a 22 ounce bottle. So you're getting less beer for a, a lot bigger price and you get a much, a, a very inferior flavor. Um, I bought this at Mathern's too, but I mean, it's the state of the beer world right now. Everything is a circus and, um, and a Joni and Chachi type thing. So a uh, Joni loves Chachi type thing. So the madcap laughs and all that. I, I, I'll be glad, in a way, I'll be glad when the crash comes because it'll, it'll, it'll uh, sort of filter out a lot of the BS, a lot of the bunk, a lot of the bunk. So it's, it's kind of like um, the way Godzilla movies got to be with all the flying or shooting at the ground. And by the time they decide to get back to seriousness it was too late and they had destroyed the franchise so but uh, uh, of course beer is not <laughs> Godzilla movies anyway y'all come on down to Baton Rouge and go to a Southern University basketball game